me turn with this, please, to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8 this morning. Begin reading at verse number 22. Again, Luke chapter 8, verse number 22. Here we find in the Word of God, the Scripture says, And now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side, under the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. There came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. They came into him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind, the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And they arrived to the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. You're in the habit of marking your Bible. I'd like to draw your attention to verse number 25. The Lord Jesus speaking to his disciples, he asked a very sincere yet sobering question that I believe must be asked of you and I today. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much today for the privilege to know Jesus Christ is our personal Lord and Savior. To know that He willingly and lovingly went to Calvary's cross and there He bled and died for my sin. Yet not just for my sin, but for the sin of the whole world. That all who would put their faith and trust in Him could be forgiven of their sin be cleansed and be saved and would be redeemed by God's marvelous grace. Lord, we are so thankful that along the journey from here to glory, there's an unseen hand that guides us and guards us. There's one who cares about every one of his children. Oh, help us to trust you. Lord, I pray that you help us today. Speak to hearts. Encourage the saints. Lord, if there's one here that's lost, would you save that soul that's near as hell? Lord, I pray that you would encourage your children with this thought. They can trust you. They can trust you. Have your way in all that's done. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The disciples, Peter, James, John, Matthew, Andrew, Bartholomew, all the disciples had been on the Sea of Galilee not once, not twice, but many times. They had been in their boats, they had been fishing, and no doubt as was the custom in that part of the world, in that country, The winds would come and begin to come over those mountains and come down across that Sea of Galilee and storms would brew in a moment. Begin to trouble the waters, begin to stir the waters and they begin to get boisterous and 
no doubt they have been in a boat many times and wonder if they're going to make it back to land. This was not just any of those times. This was a different time. Where you see there was someone else in the boat. You look at the Lord Jesus. We find in this story we have a divine Savior who's with them. Can you imagine living life on a, on a turbulent sea without the Lord Jesus as your Savior? That's exactly where people are today without Christ. They're in the midst of a sea uh, of this world and the storms of this world toss them about and the winds come and the troubles come and the, everything blows but yet they don't have Christ in the boat with them. But Christ one day called each one of these disciples by name to come follow me. I reminded when the Lord Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm thankful for an invitation to come to Jesus Christ and, and trust Him and put my faith in Him that He could give me rest for my life. Give me a peace in my soul. I'm thankful for that night that I said, yes, I'll take Christ and I'll follow him. But Jesus Christ did not also call them to salvation, but he called them to service. And part of that service was an in intense time of training, if you will, or mentoring when in Mark chapter number 5. The Lord Jesus, excuse me, Mark chapter number 2, I believe it is. Mark called his disciples and said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and that you might be with me. He said, I want you to be with me. And they came, and they were with the Lord. And they after they had been with the Lord, then he sent them out to preach. There's preparation before preaching time. He said, I want you to be with me. Aren't you thankful for the times that he says, I just want to be, I want you to be with me. I just want you to be with me. But in this story, as we look at the divine Savior and then the disciples of the Savior, I want you to notice first with me the divine Savior. Notice his presence here in, in verse number 22 in the very first part. It said, it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. This was not a time when he called his disciples to come to be with him, but this was a time when he went with his disciples. Aren't you glad? He said, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. He said, I'll be with you. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even in the end of the world. He said, I'll be with you all the way to the end. I'm glad when you start the journey with Christ, He stays with you. Aren't you thankful that he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee? The Lord Jesus. Oh, it's a wonderful thing to be invited to come unto him and then to be asked to be with him. But oh, how greater joy it is to know that he desires to be with us. To be with you. His presence is here with his disciples, but notice his purpose in this story. He said in verse number 22, he said, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. Aren't you glad when he comes in, he wants to go to the other side? This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. 
My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. If he's going to go with me all the way to the end, that means he's going to be with me until I reach heaven's shore. The life of a believer with Christ begins at Calvary. And it does not end until we reach heaven. He's with us. He's with us all the way. All the way. And notice he, in, he, he invites them his purpose. He says, let us. In other words, let's all go. I like that. I like that. To the other side of the lake. But notice his peace. I see his presence. I see his purpose. But I see his peace peace in the journey. In verse number 24, the storm has come and the disciples have come to the Lord Jesus. But notice uh, in verse number, uh, number uh, uh, 23, notice, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. Here's the God who made the heavens, who made the earth, who made the sea, made the wind in the person of Jesus Christ. Here's God, the one that knew everything, the beginning to the end. Do you think for a moment that he did not know there was going to be a storm? Did you not think for a moment that he knew that the winds were going to kick up? Do you not think for a moment that the, the waters were going to begin to overflow the side of the boat? I don't know if it's occurred to you, but nothing's occurred to God. He's known it all the time. Yet, in the midst of all that he knows, he's not fearful, he's not afraid, he's at peace, he's resting, he's sleeping. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? My God doesn't worry about our storms. The simple fact that he knows he's able to handle the storm. But he's at rest. He's, he's, he's resting. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. But then his power, in verse 24, the Bible says they came to him, they woke him up, and then he arose and rebuked the wind. Ah. He did not do anything but said, Peace, be still. His power, the power of his word, the power of the word of God ought to be enough. Satisfy the storms in my life. But I think with his presence, his purpose to go with them, his peace in the midst of the journey, his power to take care of the storm. But there's one thing that he does that strikes me with great interest his probing in verse number 25 he's probing he's searching the heart of his disciples and he says where is your faith wow where is your faith I've been here all the time I've been, I've been at rest. I've not been worried about a thing. Where is your faith? How many times do we encounter storms? And we know that we have Him with us. And we know that we have the Word of God. Do 
yet we become afraid, fearful, until we're at our wit's end. You ever get to your wit's end? Or country boy, that just means scared out of your britches. And I've been scared out of my britches a few times. But where is your faith? He's asking you, he's asking me, he's asking each of his disciples, his believers, where is your faith? I want you to notice with me the disciples of the Savior. Some thoughts about them. I'm thankful for the divine Savior that I have. First of all, in verse number 22, their accompaniment is divine. Guess who's accompanying them on the journey? It's the divine Son of God. He went with His disciples. I'm so thankful. If I could ever wrap my mind around what great truth this is, that He's with me always, I should never fear. I should never be afraid. But you know... Because of the finiteness of our mind and our, our, the, the frailty of our heart, we do forget. More than we want to acknowledge sometimes that He's with us in the ship. But notice their acquiescence is doubtless. Their acquiescence is Dallas. In other words, they launched forth. Here he said, let us go over to the under, under the other side of the lake. Notice, they exhibit faith. They exhibit with great, without doubt, they launched out. How many times at God's word, at God's command, at God's direction in our life, we have stepped out by faith. We have gone and We have started the journey to do something for God. Not just to do something for God, but do something with God. I think so many times we try to do it for God, but we need to recognize we need to do it with God. With Him. With Him. But then... I see their apparent danger in verse number 23. He's asleep. Came to pass here, but as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. It never fails. The moment things seem to be settled, seem the most peaceful, storms hit. The winds came down. Say what you want to. But not every storm in our life is because of sin. There are storms, in fact, I think a lot of the storms are because God is trying to test us and prove our faith and strengthen our faith and encourage the faith of others by our faith. The winds came down. I'm reminded of Job. Job, a man that feared God, eschewed evil, lived for God, honored God with his life and with his substance. The devil just could not get his way with Job. The devil went before the throne of God. Go back and read chapter 1. 
said, you put a hedge about this man Job. I can't touch him. I can't get to him. I can't. God said, no problem. I'll let you try him. You realize that sometimes the winds come because God says, okay, I'll give you a shot at him. I'll give you a shot at him. Try your faith in the journey. Job proved himself true to God. Go read the entire book. He could have. Lost his family, lost his fortune, but he did not lose his faith in God. He trusted God. Trusted God. In the midst of the danger, their apparent danger, I mean, they were in jeopardy. They were in a hazardous situation. I mean, it was getting very tumultuous. Water was in the boat. It was taking on water. To the point they were getting filled up. That's what the Bible tells me. How many times have the storms come that you felt like, man, I don't think I can handle anymore. That's our problem. We try to handle it. Here are the disciples. I'm sure these were experienced seamen, fishermen. They've seen water come in a boat before. They've seen how to get out of the water in the boat. No doubt their dads trained them, and they had trained others and so forth, but they knew how to take care of getting the water out of the boat. But it began to fill up. Have you ever gotten to the place in your life when the storms come and you just like, I can't handle steak, I can't take any more. I'm up to here. Been down to Panama City. Been out there in the, the water. I have never enjoyed getting in water. Never been never learned how to swim. And I would wait out a ways and I would get out some in the water. Oh, you let that wave come and let it get up to here. I'm like, uh, 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 uh. it's almost like a hyperventilation takes place. Fearful. Well, I learned this past August that I could, tr as long as I keep my feet on the bottom, I can make it. Guess what? As long as I'm resting on the Lord Jesus. I don't care how high the waters get, I can still survive. Can I tell you? I mean, they were in danger, and, and there's times I felt like I was in danger in my life. But then I see in verse 24 their, appe their appeal for deliverance. And they came to him and awoke him. Saying, Master, Master, we perish. Isn't it great that he's close enough you can run to him? Think about where he was. He wasn't on the other side of the lake waiting on them. He wasn't on the other side of the lake watching them go. He was right there with them. Aren't you glad all you got to do is speak the name of Jesus and the storm clouds have to go. I mean, they went to him. They cried unto him. Let me tell you, that's where we need to run. That's who we need to call on. We can't handle the storm. We can't handle the difficulty. We can't handle the danger. He can, and he's readily available and wants to. Notice their amazement. 
is displayed. After he, he gets up, they wake him up, he arose, he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Verse 25, and he said unto them, notice, uh, he said unto them, where is your faith? And they, notice this, being afraid, wondered their amazement, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and water, and they obey him. Well, they've been walking with him. They've sat at his feet. They've seen him heal the blind. They've seen him touch the lame. They've seen him perform miracle after miracle after miracle. And their amazement, well, just, who is this guy? Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about because you do the same thing and I do too. We've seen him perform miracle and answer prayer after prayer in the life of his believers, of his children, time after time after time. And when we call on him ourselves, when we say, wow, I didn't know he could do that. And we act so shocked. And he was just wanting to do it all along because he could. You know, he did not have to go to sleep because he knew the storm was coming. He could have held the storm off if he wanted to, but he didn't. He could have, before they even came to him, he could have settled the whole thing. But you know what he wanted? He wanted them to trust him and to ask him. I like their achieved destination in verse number 26. And they arrived. Think about that. And just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Breathing new air and finding it celestial. Touching a hand and finding it God's. Just think of being finally home on the other side. We say, we can't make it. We're not going to get there. We're not going to, we can't handle it all. No, you can't, but he can. How many remember the old, uh, I guess, I think, I think it was Greyhound commercial. Just leave the driving to us. The old timers remember those. Just, we didn't have supersonic transports. Most people didn't fly planes. They rode buses if they were to travel across country. But Greyhound, just leave the driving to us. And I tell you, why don't we just leave the journey? And again, he asked them, where is your faith? Keep in mind, they started out believing they're going to make it to the other side because they launched out. At his word, let's go, they launched out. I don't know about you, but so many times I've started out on a journey. I've started out to do something for God. Only to have a storm come. Have something get so overwhelming that I begin to, my faith begins to wane. I begin to try to handle it myself. And I finally have to come to him after all. And he looks at me, where's your faith? Where did it go? In other words, where did it go? The answer to your faith is always with you in the person of Jesus Christ. Can I give you a definite summation real quick? Three little thoughts. Storms will come to every believer. You've got to get this. Storms will come to every believer. It was not one disciple in that boat. It did not say that he went into the ship with 
a disciple, but with his disciples, plural, more than one. A disciple is just a follower of Christ, one who's trusted Christ, one who's believed in Christ, one who's walking, one who's living by faith. Storms are going to come to every one of us that know Christ as our Savior. But secondly, storms can be calmed by the Savior. Every storm, He can handle. There's not any big storms, not any little storms that He cannot take care of. He's able. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Who's in us? It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's what Paul said. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But thirdly, storms don't have to hinder the journey. Storms don't have to hinder the journey. I, I mean, they started and they arrived safely on the other side. They don't have to hinder. They're going to come, but they don't have to hinder. They don't have to stop the journey. You don't have to turn around and go back. Just keep going. Just keep going. Keep treading the water. Keep going on. But there's five simple decisions that must be made. I want to give them to you very quickly. If you and I are going to enjoy the journey, here they are. Number one, I must know that the Savior's with me. You've got to know Christ as your personal Savior. You've got to know that He's with you. And He's with every young person that's put their faith and trust in Christ, as well as every older person that's put their faith and trust in Christ. He's with every one of us. I'm glad I know He's with me. But secondly, I need, to, I need to know that I can't handle my storms. You need to know you can't handle your storms. We think we know how to solve our problems. I don't care if they're financial storms, family storms, faithfulness storms. You, you name them. I, don't, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, we try to handle them all. We try to put together our best laid plan on how to take care of it. And it's not enough to get it done. Thirdly, we need to call upon the Savior who is able to handle the storm. We need to run to Him. We need to come to Him. Seek the Lord while ye, He may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is, what, near. Is he near to you? If he's in your heart, he's near. Fourthly, don't fail to trust his ability. He's able. Don't fail to trust his ability. I'm, I have gotten to the place in my life as a, as a man that I'm secure as a man that if I can't handle a heavy job, I don't mind letting the boys do it. I don't mind letting these younger guys that are around here do it. If something needs to be moved, I don't mind asking anymore. Would you do it? Help me. Why don't we trust the ability that God has? He's never weakened. He's never waned in his, his ability. He's never, he's never failed in anyone. But then don't be surprised by what he can do when you do trust him. Don't be surprised because he's done it for others. He's going to do it for others. He just wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for me. Reminded of the story of Stonewall Jackson. If you're a deep-rooted Southerner, you understand and know the, the history of Stonewall Jackson. 
Stonewall Jackson and his sister, who was younger than he, were on up at the, Niagara, the American side of the Niagara Falls. And uh, they were in a rowboat. It was a small rowboat, but they were in a rowboat. And uh, the, the water's coming over the, the falls and everything. They were, they were traversing that and so forth. Unlike today where they have little bigger boats and, you know, they're motorized and so forth. This one was manned by an oarman who literally just rowed two oars and rowed them through. Well, there was a storm that came up and it made the waters even more rough. And the winds were blowing and, and so forth and and the, the sister began to scream, began to cry out in fear. She began to reach out to, to grab the oars. And Stonewall Jackson grabbed her by the arm. He said, wait a minute. And he looked at the man, the oarman, and he asked him, he said, how long have you been doing this? And the man said, I've been doing this for 12 years. Tell me, sir, have you, have you ever failed to make the crossing? No, sir, I have made it all the way every time. Have you ever lost anybody on the journey from one side to the other in this boat? He said, no, sir, I've never lost a person. I've never capsized a rowboat when these storms would come up like this. And he looked at his sister and he said, why don't you just sit back instead of trying to take the oars in your own hands, let the man who knows what he's doing take care of it and we'll be all right like I'm going to trust him. Why don't we just... Stop reaching for the oars. Christ, who's, he's, you're not the first one that he's carried to the other side. You won't be the last one. Trust him who's never failed, who's never faltered, who's never even had the ability to fail. But he's always got a 100% success rate in getting us through the storms of life from Calvary to glory for you. Where is your faith? Is it in you or is it in Christ?